All right, uh, it's called boondocking when you camp without being in a campground. And uh, there's an art to it. Fuel can get expensive in the rig. And that's one of my biggest, uh, biggest expenses is the fuel for the rig. And uh, I just spent a lot of that looking for spots to park to camp for the night. But uh, time to gas up, see how much it takes. It was about two years ago, and uh, just after Christmas, I had I'd had it with my girlfriend. I'd had it with my job, uh, my friends, and uh, I packed up my car in 15 minutes flat and moved out to the coast. I just drove my car out here, left my job. I didn't know what I would do. And uh, a couple months in, sleeping in the car wasn't working for me. I felt homeless. I was homeless. And uh, I saw an ad for an RV for a thousand bucks. And that's what I've been driving and living in since, on and off. But for the most part, uh, it has been home. And it's worked out well. So, I don't know where my car is now. It got repossessed, but uh, they're probably looking for me. This is a lot more expensive than any of the other gas stations in town. I should have checked this out a bit better. They're a dollar and eight a liter across the road. Here it was dollar twenty-two. Uh, Superstore is usually a good deal because I get uh, super bucks, and you can buy food in the store with them. And uh, you get seven cents per liter. I actually, I got an account with. Uh, President's Choice so that I could double my rewards per liter. So it makes a difference. It doesn't add up to a shitload, but you know, every bit helps. Every bit helps. Now I trust that's in focus. Uh, I've just started filming boondocking. And uh, I started writing it last night. I think it's going to be a blast. But uh, I've got this new equipment. A better memory card. And uh, hopefully that works out. I do some videos for YouTube. And they pay me my insurance. On a good month I could probably probably make a hundred bucks. Now if I work on that I could get two, three, four, five hundred a month. Then I don't have to worry about all this job bullshit. Rearrange their shelves. So 
Cheers. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> right on. Sweet uh, so the sh boondock and digs. Always boondock. That's the key. Always boondock. Hey Sticks, what's up? Not much. Just Why? waiting to go on a beer run. <laughs> is that what boondocking is all about? It can't be about beer. Well, it's about 50% of it. Shit, what was that?
it'll topple all over. And that's the worst thing about having to get up and leave in a sudden. Everything flies off the shelves. Frozen dough is just starting to thaw. Perfect. This is the logging road, we're not sure where entirely it goes. We've got uh, a whole bunch of uh, hills around, but it goes right down to the ocean up ahead. And that obviously connects with the highway somewhere. Up on the uh, logging road, that's really, it's just petered out to basically nothing. I was hoping to get the RV down it. But uh, here we are, and we see the, the crest of the hill is not too far. And the view from here is amazing. There's a, there's a bear trail or a cow trail here. But uh, the view is amazing here, and I think there's a better view at the top. Duh. So we're gonna give it a hike. That's what boondocking's all about. definitely an animal trail of some kind, but uh, Reed, are you all right? Is the beer okay? Take the easier way up. You're pretty high up that butt fucking tree. I'm not I'm not fishing you out. Why do they call you sticks? I don't know CPR if that's what you're uh, aiming for here. Well, how's it look like? What can you see from up there? Is it a nice view? Yeah, this is March 3rd. I find it a little odd that the trail goes through the tree. 
but this is the way the animals go, that's what you should follow. If you're ever out looking for a good trail, follow the way the animals do. That's the shit. Don't follow that animal, he's a retard. You dick. Alright. We are to the fucking top. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh fuck yeah! Look at all this! This is my view. I boomed off. I don't have a home, but this is my view. <laughs> fuck everyone! Beautiful. You can see the waves coming in a mile before they hit the shore. In here, we got a tooth. Okay, now, yeah. Now that's a canine tooth, a hundred percent. Or claw. Or a claw. Yeah, that could be a claw, eh? Yeah. So, fuck off. Owl. This is too. No, owl. An owl poops and and little bird poops, and then it. Um, so it's a mammal, or this is a mammal for sure. Well, it's not a bear. It's not a bear. I'm thinking uh, coyote or young wolf. Yeah, that's probably about right. A young wolf. Well, with boondocking, solar power is uh, essentially your best friend, and dogs are your worst friend. And uh, it's the way we boondock. With boondocking at its best, you have a private residence that somebody lets you pay a fee. I pay a hundred dollars here and I do get a driveway and uh, it's not a permanent thing it's a month-to-month -month arrangement and uh, it's really nice to not be in Walmart every night because Walmart is the ghetto boondocking. Real good boondocking if you can find some crown land or something that's perfect. If you don't have to to go too far to get to work or uh, if you have a source of income other than work it's perfect thing you do is just get uh, get yourself a uh, spot on crown land or or anywhere that's uh, public land and you can camp there for 17 days or 14 days in Canada and you gotta move after that but it's uh, the next best thing save you a lot of headache and money if you just find somebody and say hey I don't need to plug in, I don't need to dump my tanks, I don't need water, I just need a spot to park. And, uh, there we go. And part of my job is that I have to take a boat uh, to go from Vancouver to Victoria about once a month. It's a nice boat ride, but uh, there's quite a bit of uh, shitty weather out here on the boat. There's an inside part, but uh, I want to catch a dolphin or something swim along the side, and it happens. All right, we're 
we're camped at Jordan River. Uh, we got the solar set up and everything, but we are going to cook tonight. I got steaks, which is a rare treat, but uh, expensed them at work. So uh, to get our fire going, chainsaw off the fucking wood that's laying on the beach, and it's everywhere. <laughs> Just that bit that I cut there is like seven bucks worth that you get from a gas station or anywhere else. That's how we fucking cook. up uh, building this generator and prehistorically there's a, been a big dead log here and it's uh, probably been decaying for quite a while now so it's very spongy which works out for the generator plopped behind it in our RV there because it seems to uh, absorb all the vibration and we can barely hear the generator while sitting in the RV less than 15 feet away uh, which probably works out better for our neighbors as well yeah. and oh over here we have holly I don't know much about the holly except it's uh, used in uh, mistletoes I don't know <laughs> anyhow Just 
get the feeling there's something up around here. And it's probably a good time to turn around and get back. Because whatever this was, this shank, somebody lived in at some point. But with this amount of five gallon pails strewn about and tarping and tires, Seems like there could be a grow up nearby, and I don't want to stumble onto one. I don't know where we are. This trail is occasionally used. Probably there are full-size trucks that come down here, and also some quads. So these are the overturned roots of, I can't tell from this side, but this was a big tree. Uh, you can see from here it was growing right on the, uh, right on the bedrock. So it couldn't lay down too good of roots, but kind of incredible, you know, a little windstorm tipped up this huge chunk of land. neat. Weird place. Looks like it's been selectively logged. Oh, wow. Hmm. What type of bones do you suppose these are? So this, uh, this deer skeleton out here, it's been pretty picked over, it's probably a couple years old. And uh, nicely covered in, uh, in uh, pine needles, but uh, ashes to ashes, it's uh, funny the dog uh, comes across actual bones and doesn't want to play with them. Just the, uh, the food bones we eat and sticks and stuff, but... Uh, seemed a bit confused when he came across it, so it's a circle of life. It's a, it's a really eerie forest with uh, seen something this decayed before. Phenomenal. And right there are the old growth. Older growth. Man could explore this for 
months. You never really see it all. And when you think about prospecting, gold prospecting, underneath all of this moss, there's bedrock right there. And this, this one small chunk of area would take a man his entire life to fully explore and prospect all this land. I got the sinking sensation that we're getting close to somebody's backyard though. You know how people are. Get off of my land. <laughs> so, back down the hill to uh, the boondocking spot. Hey Reed, what's up? Welcome to the first half of where I live right now. So a bit of a steep hill here. Oh, that it is. Um, And the river's back at a good level. Oh, so it is. It was much higher uh, a day ago. <laughs> right. Uh, what are those boondocking drinks that you have there? Oh, the old Pacific Pill. I see. My stupid friend and my stupid dog. Right, fair enough. No, that is a little deep. Well, if it's summertime, I could walk across. Yeah, it's not summer. So Steve, by the looks of it, your life ain't too shabby right now. Could be worse, I suppose. I don't have a brick and mortar house, but I do the same things everybody else does. I am, like this is my backyard, 10 steps from where a park would be. Uh, water is a little deep. Looked shallower from shore. The tree looked more sturdy from shore. I might fall in. But I have a beer that I just cracked. So I have to be very careful. Because when you're homeless, like myself, the worst thing you can do is spend money on beer and then drop it in the ocean or the river whatever combination of ocean and river this is. Oh yeah, I can see myself falling in on the way back down. Good thing I left my phone up there.
this is uh, this is the reservoir on this side. Here's the wreck site campground generating station on this side. Call that a generator. That's a generator. I don't know how safe it is for a campground to be right here, but there is a free BC Hydro campsite right at the uh, dam. I don't know how safe it is to have a campground right out here. Uh, beautiful lake though. And it's a pretty sweet campground. But this is the spillway for the dam right here. Uh, if the siren goes off, we are supposed to book it. Yeah, this is all the spillway that's been carved out of the rock. This uh, set of valves here controls the spillway for the dam. Uh, this is the full side. And it empties out over here through this channel right down to the campground. Oh, you can hear it trickling a little right now. Terrifying. And it looks like it gets opened uh, from time to time. Quite the thing. But yeah, it's where we camp around here on the dam. One issue when you're boondocking in the city is police. They notice you. They don't like what you're doing. Um, in some towns, it's illegal to sleep in your vehicle. And I know that Walmart uh, is usually friendly. Uh, Costco usually is too. But always double check with the managers because some stores are, uh, they're renting the land from uh, another company that owns the parking lot. So. Uh, you want to be sure that you're not going to get any trouble. Um, <clears throat> if you do camp in a parking lot like this, do not drink. It's, uh, you might get a knock at the door, and that is never pleasant. Long-term uh, urban stealth camping is best done with a minivan or an other less conspicuous rig. Uh, because whatever you use for a rig, move it around every night if you can. Um, Walmart once gave me an eviction note on my windshield after three days there in a row. So you gotta watch out. All depends on the managers of the stores, but uh, it's a very good, very good idea to uh, move it around and avoid the city at all costs. Maybe overnight getting supplies, but keep it out in the, out in the boondocks, so to speak. And that's my advice on that. So when you're boondocking, one of the nice things is that you can do whatever you want because you can live wherever you want. And time to go for a boat ride, I think, today. Okay, it's real. 
are capsizing in the boat, yeah, taking in a shitload of water. And uh, this was a, a bad idea. Yeah, oh, Christ. This is, uh, oh shit, smokes are lost. Entire pack is fucking dead. Oh my. Okay. I'm gonna bring my cell phone. Woo! I brought mine. I got okay. it. You know, tow me back here. We lost the pack of smokes to the water. So we're gonna have to do another run for smokes. Well, here we are. All right. Thanks, Reed, for the lift. No thanks for the shitty idea. And one of the shitty aspects when you're boondocking is just not being able to go into a place, change your clothes, shower, and you go to rec centers or campground showers, friends' places, but you know, you're pulling clothes out of a duffel bag, you're shaving in a public sink, like it's it's shitty in that way and it is nice like Reed's inside right now after the fucking boat accident and he's you know kicking back inside and relaxing and uh, I'm sitting here in my wet jeans I could probably find some others to throw on but I'm probably just gonna let these ones dry out and uh, it's uh, cramp quarters it's one of those things, but, you know, I'm in, I'm in an RV, and it's pouring rain, it's, uh, being a nice house like, uh, like that, if I wanted to give away all my free money, but, we know how I feel about that, that's why I, uh, up with this type of shit. Well, things uh, have changed for me since I started filming boondocking. Um, unfortunately, lots of footage was stolen from a truck break-in along with a camera and laptop. Uh, that's just a good reminder to check your insurance policy because in my case the contents were not covered and it's taken me uh, a little bit of time to actually build things back up again. Um, the biggest thing for me that's changed is also I've sold out and I live in a home now. I did meet an amazing woman and I'm getting married this summer. So boondocking is a fantastic way to live for a single person with itchy feet and it would be a fine lifestyle if your job and other obligations and your partner work out in that respect. So 
In the three years I spent on the road, I made the best friends of my life, uh, better friends than I've ever had in my life. And I'm still in touch with them. I call every day to read. Um, he's moved on to Ontario and is hoping to make it back to the coast again. It's, uh, I had the best times of my life and I realized the ultimate feeling of independence and freedom. When you don't have to rely on anyone for anything, hit those logging roads and it'll be the best adventure of your life. So my advice if anyone has watched this far is to jump right in and do it. Uh, my videos get a lot of views on Mondays when people get to work and realize there could be more to life. So. I'm still uh, going to do camping and truck camping videos, but the RV has come to the end of the road for me. Um, so, always boondock, and you will be free.